What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie and this is Hustle and Grow. So today I wanted to make this quick video just to talk about what I believe are three types of reselling and, and maybe, maybe more specifically online reselling. I guess you can, so this isn't meant to, I guess, condense everything down into just three types. Okay. So I don't want to make it seem like this is it, but I feel like when you break it all down and, and look at it, there's three main types of reselling. Okay. So number one, it's going to be long tail reselling. And this isn't, isn't in any particular order for any particular reason. Okay. It's just three types. I'm not saying the one is like the number one way, so on and so forth. So number one would be long, long tail, uh, reselling. Number two would be volume reselling. And number three would be hybrid type of reselling. So, I'm going to break each of those down quickly and, and tell you what I mean by those. So first, long tail reselling. What is long tail reselling? I would say, in my opinion, long tail reselling would be items that you fully expect to sit for months and months at a time before they sell. So you're talking about a very low sell through rate. All right. One percent, two percent. Um, you might be looking at anywhere from three months to a year before an item sells. Okay. Now I'm not saying that there's anything wrong in particular with these forms of reselling, but here's the thing before you get started, you need to know exactly what type of reseller you want to be, what type of items you want to sell and what to expect. That way you can have a, 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 a good business plan and, and make, you know, take proper steps in order to operate your business. If you have absolutely no idea what type of items you're selling and how long they may take to sell and what the sell through rates are, or, you know, this, this can cut running all types of problems and in, in including, you know, you going out of business. And so to be a long-term reseller means you have to understand that these items are going to take a while to move, which means you have to have capital and you have to have a lot of items. You got to have a lot of items because if items taking anywhere from three months to a year or more to move, you need a lot of items so that you can have a, a, a good amount of income coming in. And so to be a long, long tail seller for me is not something that I'm, I'm looking to do. I know there's a lot of them. I, I watched the one channel called million dollar peddlers and you know, they, they have long tail stores, but they have uh, tens of thousands of items up as well. So, now, when you play in that type of game, you can definitely make a, a, a good income on that. But you have to understand that because you're going to, especially in the beginning phases, in the beginning steps, you're going to have a lot of capital tied up into those items. So the question is, can you afford to have that capital tied up? Can you afford to make that initial large investment to get more money coming in to you on the back end? I feel like with a long tail strategy, you're going to have a larger investment up front, but a lot more cash flow on the back end, you know, I, I, and so if you can understand that, and if you have that larger cash investment to make up front, then that's fine and dandy. Or, or, or if you're, and you also need, I think a good mix of items, you know, you, you need some lower selling items and you also need some high, higher dollar amount items to sell as well. Okay. So that's the first one long-term second. Second type of reseller model for me is the volume seller. All right. It's the volume model. So what is the volume model? The volume model is moving a large amount of products, probably at a lower cost, um, per sale, you know, lower cost per sale. Now, if you want to be a volume seller, you have to understand what this is. You can have an initial investment that is lower on the front end but you might not have as much profits because you have to, your profit margins might, is going to probably be a little bit lower than, you know, your long-term seller, long-term seller. They might have higher profit margins, but they can wait. And so they'll just wait it out as a volume seller. You, you won't, you might not have those margins that be as high. So you have to move volume. So now when you're talking about $1, $2, $3, $4, 5, I think, I honestly think, Anything under $5 profit, you need to, it's, it, that's, that's volume selling to me. Like you need to be a volume seller. If you want to, if you want to make a living, 
All right, we just, I'm not talking about necessarily being a, a part-time seller or a side hustler. I'm saying if you wanna make a living as a volume seller, anything under $5 profit to me, you have to be a volume seller. You have to move product. And so your strategy is gonna vary tremendously from the strategy of, of a person who is a long tail seller because you need to move product, which means you, you need to understand your category. You need to understand the competition in your category. You need to know what your cost of goods is, what the lowest amount that you can be able to take and, and, and still turn a profit, even if it's low, and how many times you got to do that to get to the amount of money you want to make per month, per week, per month, per year. So if you say, man, I want to make a thousand dollars profit a month, and, and that's kind of low, but I'm just saying, if you saying you want to make a thousand dollars profit per month or a thousand dollars profit per week, well, then you need to know if you're selling items that are only netting you two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, five dollars profit after all costs, how many times do you got to do that? And then, so that means you have to continue to feed the beast. You have to continue to feed the beast. And so then you run into another issue. Now, since you, since you are a volume seller and you need to continuously be moving product, where are you going to source this product from? Are you going to be able to source this product? Here's where, you know, thrifting and, and using solely, using thrifting solely as your sourcing method can become a problem if you're going to be a volume seller. Thrifting, I think for me personally, it's good if you're going to be my next type of seller, which I got coming up or a next model, but you definitely are going to struggle if you're going to use thrifting as your sole source of product and be a volume seller. And then there's other things you got to consider as well. You know, as a volume seller, you're going to continuously need, you might need help because now, because you have to sell so many products and you have to move so many products in order to be able to net the amount of money that you want to uh, net, which is we, we're talking about a life sustaining income, you, you're probably going to need help in the form of whether that be VAs or, 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 or um, a worker or two. And so, you know, that, 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 that's up to you, though. But that brings me to my third type of um, reselling model, which is a hybrid model. And a hybrid model, I'm sure you can guess what that means is combination of both long tail and volume selling models where you have some items that are long tail, but then you have some items that move faster. And so for me at the moment, I have a hybrid type of eBay store, a hybrid type of model. I have no interest in being a long tail seller. I kind of do have an interest in being a volume seller. But I have to, I have to clean up a lot of things. I got to clean up my systems and I, and I got a lot of things that I got to get in place before that happens. Cause if I start doing that, then I'm a bottleneck and, and I'm going to run into a lot of issues. But as of right now, I do have some items and a lot of my long tail items, honestly, are probably <laughs> more likely just bad buys. Uh, if, if I have my choice going forward, I'm honestly looking, I, I'm honestly looking at being a volume seller more than anything. So I'm going to be doing inventory and I'll make some videos on this. I'm going to be doing inventory and I'm going to be cleaning up my store, trying to get rid of some things. I'm going to be actually pulling some things out of my store, maybe get rid of them, donate them, maybe put them in a box until spring comes back around and throw them in a, um, you know, some yard sales and just try to off them that way. But I think my model going forward is going to be more volume seller. I, I personally like the, the faster pace. And this could come from me working in the restaurant industry for over 10 years and being a restaurant management man, fast paced environment. I, I really don't like sitting on stuff. And, and, and also I'm a little impatient as well. But so I understand though, that I need supply. So I need to have multiple sources locked down and I need to know exactly where I'm getting my product from. I, I need to have systems in place that are efficient, that allows me to process that inventory that's coming in at ex expeditiously that allows me to take pictures and get that stuff listed and get that stuff put up and inventoried efficiently. And it allows me to pull, pack and ship, right? Efficiently. And my systems right now are not bad, but I, I know that if I got past a certain amount, there's, there's weekends where I've had 60 plus items going out, almost 70 items at, on a Monday and my shipping time is just not good. And, and in part, that's because 
I'm shipping multiple things. So I'm going from smaller items that I can just throw in a package to now I got bigger items that I got to kind of like, you know, uh, Frankenbox some things. And, and, and it's just, it start. it's just, that's for me, man. It's just, it's more, it seems mentally, it's just draining. It's draining for me. So for me personally, I'm moving more towards being a volume seller. And, and you as a reseller need to decide what type of seller you want to be. Do you want to be long tail? Do you want to be volume? Do you want a hybrid type of store? Do you want to mix it up? I think once you nail down exactly what you enjoy most, it makes everything else in your business a lot more easier. Now you know, okay, if this is the type of selling I want to do, if this is the type of model that I'm comfortable with, these are the sort of items I'm going to be looking for. These are the sort of items I'm going to be looking for. And you'll know exactly what the source, then you can, then you can begin to nail down your sources. You can target where you want to source from, who you want to source from. You'll know exactly what that type of uh, sourcing is going to cost you. You'll know what your, uh, what you call it. Um, you'll know what your lead times are going to be. You know, how long it's going to take you to get these items from that source. You'll know exactly what, how much time is going to take you to process and go through these sorts of items. And you'll have systems in place, you know, that allow you to process, package, inventory, ship everything. You'll have systems in place for these. So your business model will be set up in the most efficient manner for you to make the most money possible. It'll be very difficult if you have a long tail inventory and you're trying to do use volume systems and vice versa, right? Uh, you might even be better off if you got a, a system that's set up to do volume, but you got long tail inventory. I mean, you ain't going to be shipping out a lot of nothing anyway. So, you know, you, you'll probably have time for that. But if you switch that around, you might run into some issues. But if you have a hybrid system, I feel like that's also kind of mentally draining. And then, and, and then it causes you, you you're going to have to spend more, spend more capital because now you need money to be able to deal with this type of inventory and ship out this type of inventory. And then also to deal with this other type of inventory, ship out that. Look, I'm not knocking any of the systems. I, I've seen YouTube videos of people do, who do all the systems. Okay. And if it works for them, it works for them. So I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying as a seller, you need to understand exactly what the systems are and know what you're comfortable with. And don't just go out there and buy stuff, right? Don't just go out there and buy stuff and say, I'm going to do this. Or I'm going to buy that. Or just because it's a good deal, just because it's a good deal don't necessarily mean it's good for you to sell it. This is something I found out for myself that it's not always good for me to buy stuff just because it's at a low price. Like I'm, I'm getting away from that. I've been passing on a lot of things that are low price, low, but it's just not fitting into the model of my business. Okay. So. Long tail, volume, hybrid, what type of seller are you? Do me a favor, drop in the comments below what type of seller you are, what type of model you have sell up, uh, set up, and if it's working for you. And if you, you, if you don't know yet, drop that down below and tell me, you know, what you was thinking about, um, wh which way you lean, lean toward more and why. You know, let's have a little discussion, okay? Uh, do me a favor, if you think this video was helpful, if you like it, if you like the discussion, Hit that like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell so the next time I upload a video like this, you'll be the first to know.